SpaceX right now has some of the most successful rockets in the world. Their Falcon 9s launch so often that it honestly feels like there's always one in the sky. Some weeks they even launch twice. And the crazy part is that they land the boosters and reuse them like it's nothing. No one else has ever done that at this level. And of course, their Starship, the biggest rocket humans have ever built. You've heard all the noise around it. People saying it's too big, too heavy, it'll never get off the launch pad. But SpaceX proved everyone wrong. They launched it, it flew, and they've kept launching it for almost two years now. But here's the thing. In between Falcon 9 and Starship, there's another absolute monster that people barely talk about. Falcon Heavy. This rocket is a beast, but somehow it doesn't get the attention it deserves. That might be about to change, though, because NASA is now looking at using Falcon Heavy not just for orbital missions, but for the moon. It sounds a little crazy at first, but once you understand why, it actually makes a lot of sense. And we'll break it all down in today's video. Before we get into it, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss our future updates. So, let's start with what Falcon Heavy actually is. Most people think of it as a beefed-up Falcon 9. But that doesn't really capture its scale. It's basically three Falcon 9 first stages strapped together, working as one giant booster. When those engines fire at liftoff, you get one of the most powerful rockets operating today. And I know some of you might be thinking, wait, isn't Starship the most powerful rocket? And you're right, Starship is technically the most powerful launch vehicle ever built. But Starship is still in its test phase. It's not flying operational missions yet. That means in terms of rockets that are fully active, certified, and flying real missions, Falcon Heavy is number one. Falcon Heavy made headlines in 2018 when it launched Musk's Tesla Roadster into space. That flight was supposed to be a test run, but it became a spectacle. Since then, Falcon Heavy has flown mission after mission, every single one successful. 11 launches zero failures. For a rocket of this size, that's extremely impressive. So naturally, people started asking the question, if Falcon Heavy is this strong and this reliable, why not use it to send astronauts to the moon? And here's where things get interesting because NASA actually looked into this idea seriously. Back in 2019, the agency was trying to hit a very ambitious target of returning humans to the moon by 2024. And at that time, SLS was already facing delays. So NASA started exploring backup options, and Falcon Heavy was on the list. But in the end, NASA put the idea aside. The main argument back then was that SLS still had more raw power. Ironically, SLS ended up slipping behind schedule anyway. Its costs ballooned, and the original 2024 landing date went out the window. Looking back, using Falcon Heavy might have actually gotten humans back to the moon sooner. When you look at the numbers side by side, the differences between these two rockets become really clear. Falcon Heavy can lift around 64 tons to low Earth orbit and close to 17 tons toward the moon. SLS Block 1 on paper can push about 95 tons to low Earth orbit and around 26 tons toward the moon. So yes, SLS is technically stronger if you're only comparing pure muscle. But the moment you look past raw power, Falcon Heavy starts crushing SLS in almost every other category. For starters, the cost. A fully expendable Falcon Heavy launch is roughly $500 million. And if SpaceX lands the side boosters and reuses hardware like they normally do, the price drops below $100 million. That's insanely cheap for a rocket this powerful. Meanwhile, SLS costs nearly $2 billion per launch, and that's just the cost of one mission. If you add up what NASA has poured into SLS since the program began, the total cost is now sitting well over $23 billion. And that number continues to climb because every SLS booster, every engine, every fuel tank, every part of it gets thrown away after one single use. And the SLS engines themselves? They're literally repurposed space shuttle engines from the 80s and 90s. NASA took old RS-25 engines that were meant to be reused multiple times on the shuttle 
and decided to use them once on SLS, then throw them in the ocean. Each of those engines costs tens of millions of dollars. It's like taking a vintage Ferrari, driving it once, and then pushing it off a cliff. Falcon Heavy, on the other hand, is built around reusability from top to bottom. The two side boosters land back on land. The center core can land on a drone ship. Even the fairings, the nose cones covering the payload, are fished out of the ocean, cleaned up, and flown again. SpaceX treats hardware like assets. SLS treats hardware like trash. And then there's reliability. Falcon Heavy has flown 11 times, and every single flight has been a success. Not one mission has failed. SLS has flown exactly one time, back in late 2022, during Artemis 1. And even though the mission succeeded in the end, the countdown leading up to that launch was filled with fuel leaks, valve issues, ground system failures, hydrogen problems. You name it. NASA had to scrub multiple attempts and spent almost the entire night trying to stop the rocket from leaking liquid hydrogen. That's not even mentioning the delays. SLS has been under development for over a decade. The first flight alone was delayed for years. And the second flight? Artemis II? That was supposed to fly in 2024, then 2025, and now we're looking at 2026 or even 2027, and these dates keep slipping because new issues keep showing up. That's why it's honestly wild that NASA hasn't seriously reconsidered using Falcon Heavy for a lunar mission. And what makes this even more surprising is what NASA has been saying lately. Instead of focusing on the problems with their own rocket, NASA recently started blaming SpaceX. They said Starship is developing too slowly, even though Starship has made more progress in two years than SLS has in more than a decade. And here's the truth. NASA is now looking at other companies for the Lunar Lander program. They already gave Blue Origin a second lander contract, even though Blue Origin still hasn't proven they can fly anything. And this is where it starts to feel a bit strange. Because if you compare SpaceX to Blue Origin using actual numbers, the difference is massive. In 2023, SpaceX launched 98 rockets. In 2024, they crossed over 120 launches. That's more than every other country. Not company, country, including China. Meanwhile, Blue Origin launched only a handful of suborbital New Shepard flights, and even those had issues, including the booster failure in 2022 that grounded the vehicle for over a year. SpaceX also has Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and is actively flying Starship test missions. Blue Origin, on the other hand, still hasn't launched New Glenn, a rocket they've been working on since 2011. That's the same year SpaceX debuted the first Falcon 9. Between then and now, Falcon 9 has completed well over 500 missions, and New Glenn is still sitting on the ground. This is why bringing Falcon Heavy into the conversation makes sense. It's already flying. It's reliable. It's cheap. It reuses boosters and fairings. And it has 11 successful missions behind it. If NASA wanted something that can reach the moon sooner and without spending billions more, Falcon Heavy is right there. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.